Uh, ladies and gentlemen, joining us now is the man who has the most tackles for the number eighth ranked team in the NFL via ESPN's power rankings. <laughs> a guy who was uh, a guy who was traded from the Miami Dolphins to the Pittsburgh Steelers. He was a first-round draft pick for the Miami Dolphins. Just one short year later, they traded him to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Mike Tomlin said, hey, we lose Ben Roethlisberger. Our offense might not be able to score any points, but as long as we can put six to seven on the board, we can stack a defense that can stop everybody from scoring at all. Give me Minka Fitzpatrick out of Miami. Get him on this defense, and he hit the ground running. He, Joe Hayden, T.J. Watt, came out uh, camp. Hayward, you name it, the crew, Melvin Ingram's now there. That defense is reminiscent of the glory days for the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Steel Curtain. Whenever you talk about the Pittsburgh Steelers football teams, you always know that the defense is going to fly around. Oh, you know yeah. that the secondary is going to hit people. You know the plays are going to be made. And whenever this guy got traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers, he didn't just have to buy in and change that thing. He lifted the culture immensely. Mike Tomlin will say nothing but positive things, I assume. Colbert, after the trade, should be getting some sort of um, uh, award or trophy. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now, all pro, pro bowler, Minka Fitzpatrick. Yeah! Minka, you got to, um, hey, are you on an iPhone right now? Yeah, am I, am I, am I crooked? Yeah, yeah, you're going to have to unlock the thing and let that thing turn real quick. And by the way, I was giving you like a 45-second intro because I heard there was all hell was breaking loose over there. We appreciate you so much for joining us, Minka. Uh, hopefully you'll be able to figure out the portrait mode. Uh, hot dog, hamburger time. Oh, you oh, yeah! Hey, you look, you look good, Minka. We appreciate you for joining us, man. How's the body feeling? How's the team feeling? You go into Buffalo, get a big win. You have 10 tackles, lead the team. Things happen to be great in Pittsburgh right now. Nobody thought you guys were going to be able to do what you did this past weekend. Yeah, you know, it was it was a tough game. The Bills are a great team. Uh, they had a whole lot of talent. It was a, it was a hard-fought win. It was a win that, that we needed for sure. Um, but, you know, we're, we're moving on to the next. We got a great team in the Raiders. They're coming off a big win too. So, you know, going to come into, into Pittsburgh with a chip on their shoulder. Uh, they beat an in-division team uh, in, in Baltimore. So, you know, we got our little bumps and bruises from last game, but we're learning from it moving forward. And, focusing on, on the Raiders. Uh, Minka, I know we want to focus on the Raiders, but I would like to take a trip back in time. Whenever you find out you're getting traded to the Pittsburgh Steelers, what is your initial thought? Because this came immediately after Ben Roethlisberger basically being announced that he's out for the season. You get first-round draft pick to Miami, traded to Pittsburgh. What's your immediate thoughts? Are you a little bit upset with Miami doing you like that, or are you excited to join the organization? And what were your immediate thoughts in that situation? Um, I mean, at first I, I was a little upset. It was bittersweet because, you know, my family there, they're in Florida. They had moved down to Florida and I got drafted down there. You know, I, I liked it down there. It's a great place. had a great community down there. But, um, you know, it, business is business. I, I had to do what was best for me. Uh, the Dolphins had to do what, was best for, what they thought was best for them. And, uh, you know, when I found out it was the Steelers, I was honest, I was excited because uh, I remember meeting Coach Tomlin and, uh, during the, in the pre-draft process. And I was like, man, that's a coach that. I really want to play for it one day, you know, if, if I had the opportunity to. So uh, when I found out it was Pittsburgh, I was like, dang, like, you know, it's kind of crazy. It worked out this way. And, uh, you know, when I got here, they just they just said, just play ball, do what you do, don't overthink nothing. And I was like, that just took a hold off my shoulders. And I was like, look, I just got to go out here and show, you know, the Steelers why they, you know, picked a, or used the first round uh pick on me, you know what I'm saying? So I went out there and just did what I had to do. Pittsburgh loves you as a player uh, for everything. I just have to ask real quick, were you uh, you felt a little intimidated because my chain was a little bit bigger and it was out? Is that why you had to move your... <laughs> 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 this little, little puts it up, so I had to... Uh, okay. <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't know if it was maybe like an alpha situation. I don't situation. got the big money yet like you, man. I don't got the big money yet. <laughs> hey, we, we could talk about that, but we won't because you're middle of the season. Let business be handled it elsewhere. <laughs> That's a way over your head. When you see TJ Watt get broken off, though, that has to make you feel good like hey the Steelers take care of their own you coming and ball out like you have since day one joining Pittsburgh by the way immediate defensive MVP candidate as soon as you hopped in that defense and they're saying hey fly around it's got to feel good I saw Joe Hayden congratulate TJ I saw everybody congratulate that's great for the organization as a whole right when things like that happen oh yeah for sure because you, you see that they're they're taking care of players and they even did some untraditional things with TJ you know what I'm saying so uh, seeing that happen is it, 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 definitely you know, puts a smile on my face, puts a smile on other players' face, and uh, it's good when, when you know that the owners and the, and the guys upstairs are taking care of the players. So 
he, you know, he, he was smiling, but I was smiling even bigger. <laughs> <laughs> I could imagine. And good luck in that entire process. It'll be handled exactly how it's supposed to. The universe always seems to find a way. But whenever you talk about Mike Tomlin, because I got a chance to chat with him in the draft process as well and meet him, and he was electric. I mean, just absolutely electrifying. Seemed like a guy I would not only want to play for, but also a guy I'd want to be friends with. When you compare him to other coaches that you had, whether it's Gase uh, or whether it's uh, Nick Saban, what is it about him that it seems like he always wins? And and people always just kind of take that for granted in Pittsburgh, I think. They're like, hey, we just win here. That's what we do. But that culture has to be built. What is it about Tomlin, you think, that he always seems to find the best in the team that he has? Yeah, I, I think... Um one is adaptability. Uh, you know, he doesn't get he doesn't get stuck uh, just doing one thing. I think week to week, uh, our game plan. If you look at it, offensively, defensively, special teams, uh, the way that it changes. You know, to who we're playing against. He, he's he's mature enough, and he's he's been through uh, enough to realize. Look, it's a, it's a it's a a league that changes week to week. It's a team that we, it's a different team we see week to week, and uh, we got to adapt to it. You know what I'm saying? We're always going to stick to our fundamentals, but we're going to adapt to what we're going to see. And also just his love for the game, like it's, it's unmatched. Like he's 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 always watching football. He has sons that are playing college football, so he's always watching that. And like anything that that happened within the last like 20, 30 years of, of, of football, would be NFL, college. He knows about it. You know what I'm saying? So he's just, he's always watching film, preparing. You know what I'm saying? Just just making sure that we're in the best possible position to win. That's the thing that I I really respect the most is that he's never gonna put his ego or his pride. Uh, before his player, you know, he's going he's gonna to say, look, we got guys that can do X, Y, Z, so that's what we're going to do. You know what I'm saying? We're not going to try to force some that I want. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to use my personnel, my arsenal, and, and go in and attack uh, their, their best qualities. So that's something that I, that I like a lot. That, that makes a lot of sense, by the way. You would assume that every coach does that, but that is not the case. People have their system. This system is one. This is what you need to do. This is this whole thing. The greatest coaches can bring out the best and make the best out of what they have. And it's been awesome to watch Tomlin work. Let's chat about you for a little bit, uh, a little bit longer. Ten tackles this past weekend. You fly around out there. Has any of the ex-Steelers secondary, Ryan Clark, Ike Taylor, Troy, that old crew, there's always been a lot of pride in Pittsburgh about the secondary flying around hitting people. Have you gotten a chance to chat with them? Because it feels like the Pittsburgh Steelers organization is most similar to a college organization with alumni kind of being apart, coming back around, and it's a very beautiful thing. Have you heard from any of the OGs, and what are their thoughts on the defense that you guys have now? Because you guys fly. Cam Hayward had 15 pressures or something. Yeah. Like, yeah. In the middle of the day, I mean, it's in saying that defense you guys have have you guys heard from any of the ogs oh we, I, we haven't we haven't heard from too many of them but um you know i think was was real big around here you know we have a saying the standard is the standard um we watch a lot of old film on on some of the guys that you know that that were you know troy palomalu defense and ryan clark those guys we watch a lot of that film because we run similar schemes and concepts and stuff like that so we watch those guys and i, I grew up watching them and and, and and, you know, saying, man, I want to play like him one day. You know what I'm saying? So I think we just kind of keep that standard of, of, of excellence, honestly. And we just watch them. We see what they do. You know what I'm saying? That's just how we learn here. When I got here, I watched I watched Cam Hayward. I watched Joe. I watched TJ, TJ Watt. And I seen what they did and how they move. And that's how I kind of, you know, put took a little bit from each one of their little routines and how they played on the field. And it's how they navigated their, their, their daily uh, walk. So I think it's just... You know, and they learn from you know those guys that you mentioned earlier. So it's just that that standard is a standard, holding each other accountable. Uh, it's all cliches, but cliches are a cliche for a reason. You know, because most of the time they're 100 percent true. And one guy on your team actually played with those guys and is still there, Ben Roethlisberger. And there's been a lot of turnover. New offensive coordinator. Ben has a new elbow, new life routines. You name it, everything like that. How has he looked this year? Because in the second half, it looked like that offense started clicking. Was there any questions in the off season by the defense? Like, hey, this offense doesn't look like what it used to look like. Was there anything like that, or did you guys? know like inevitably Ben Roethlisberger is going to be Ben Roethlisberger and things are going to start going. Yeah, it is exactly what you said. We, we knew at the end of the day Ben is going to be Ben. I, I say that all the time. I've been asked this question in media and when I'm walking down the street. You know, I, I think <laughs> uh, Ben has been a guy that's been slept on since he's been in the league. He's, he's a great player. He has a great arm. I think he looks even better than what he did before the, the surgery. Um, you know, he, in practice, you can tell, especially when he's angry and he's playing with that chip on his shoulder, there, there's nobody that's better than him. So, there's nobody I, I want to have back there uh, besides him. And, you know, we have a young offense, but, you know, the reason why we're out there as a defense is 
you know, to get them back on the field. And we're going to do our best every single game to, to get them out there, get them more opportunities to get the ball. Uh, we're going to try and score with the ball. We got it. But, you know, we're going to try and get it to them as well. You shit talk a lot or no? You quiet? Nah. <laughs> It, it depends, man. If you give me anger, I'm going I'm, to I'm talk. I'm going to talk a lot. But I try to do most of the talking with my game. I'm going to talk a lot, you say. So you, <laughs> yeah, you get it. You get, what, do you, what do you go deep? Do you uh, do you have research done on people you're potentially playing against and know some things? You do some research? I, 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 do, a little, I do a little research. I do a little research because you got to know where to hit people. You know what I'm saying? But you also got to know who you can and can't talk to. Because there's some dudes, you talk to them, and then they kind of flip that switch too. You know what I'm saying? Oh, you get a call. That's probably somebody you talk shit to, by the way. That's probably somebody you talk. Shit to. That's probably somebody you talk shit to. Like, yeah, hey, let me ruin this. Son of a bitch. Uh, that's amazing. Who is somebody you played against in the NFL that made you like open your eyes and realize like, oh, this is the men's league? Because you're playing at Alabama. Obviously, you guys just churn out pros. Is there anybody in the NFL that maybe you saw and you were like, hey, this guy, this is a different level here now. The, the NFL is much different than even the SEC. Yeah, it, it, it would be uh, my rookie year. I was kind of moving between nickel and corner. And uh, it was like maybe week, week eight or nine, we played against the Colts. And it was uh, Andrew Luck and T.Y. Hilton. And I was kind of I was kind of shadowing uh, T.Y. Uh, all over the field. He's playing in the slot a lot, so I was covering him. And I was doing a pretty good job. And then he ran a seam, a seam route, like we call it a chop route, seam route, uh, slot fade. And I was hip-to-hip, great coverage with him. And... Andrew Luck just put the ball like right on the right on his hip. I I, I like turn. I look. I was like, "There's no way he's gonna put the ball right here." <laughs> I went to the sideline. I went to the coach. I called him upstairs. I was hey, like, "Hey, like, what can I do better?" He was like, "Look, there's just sometimes just can't do nothing about it, man." And I was like, <laughs> "I was like, I guess so." <laughs> that that was definitely one of the moments where I was like, "Dang, man." Like, this is the league. This is the league. It's a real deal. Welcome to the NFL. And T.Y. and Andrew, by the way, did that to basically everybody, not just you. And I think <laughs> when Andrew retired, I think T.Y. was maybe the most disheartened human on earth for that whole thing. Still an absolute stud. We appreciate Minka Fitzpatrick joining us right now. Go ahead, Ty Schmidt. Minka, a lot of the guys we talked to last year said one of the hardest things about the COVID year, defensively specifically, was like you guys had to bring your own juice to get up for the games without the crowd being there. Going into Buffalo first week, obviously with a hostile environment, their fans haven't really got to experience, you know, them being really good again. Like, did it feel uh, like, I mean, could you feel like you were going back to normal a little bit? Like, was it just easier to get up for that game than maybe some of the games last year? The energy in that stadium was, was nuts. There, there, was, there were series where we're on defense, and I'm talking to people. I couldn't even hear myself talk. We, we had to change. We had to go to, to hand signals because we couldn't even hear anything. I'm talking to guys, and I'm like, we're, we're on defense, and, and they're screaming like that. So ah. it was definitely, it was definitely good to to have you know people back in the stadium, even if it wasn't our fans. You know, what I'm saying we were feeding off of them as well. And then once they got quiet, you know, towards the end of the game, it's even more of a uh, you know energy boost to us for sure. Uh, the Enzers are going to be outrageous in Heinz Field. I mean, it is going to be. Can't wait for it. <laughs> it is, I mean, the Yenzers are going to be coming out of every hill in Pittsburgh, rolling into Heinz Field, ready to just absolutely lose their fucking minds. Last question here from Connor. We appreciate your time here, Minka. Go ahead, Connor. Yeah, Minka, obviously you guys had a lot of rookies playing on offense, but I believe you had a few on defense as well. Are you already at the point where you can kind of help guys, you know, adjust to the league and learn in the defense? Oh, yeah, yeah, for sure. We have, we have a couple new guys, you know, Trey Norwood. Uh, James Pierce is a tier two guy, played for us a little bit last year that's playing for us. Uh, a couple of just new guys we got in, in camp. And, uh, you know, I think I'm definitely at the point where I'm taking them just under my wing. You know, all the, all the DBs, me, Trey, Cam, are just taking them and, and, and telling them, look, like, this is just how we move, this is how we do things around here. Teaching them the scheme, you know what I'm saying, and, and uh, just coaching them up, you know what I'm saying. And most of the time we just say, just watch, just watch and, and learn, you know what I'm saying. And, and that's, how, that's how we teach around here. Hey, we appreciate you so much for joining us. Uh, I'll let Colbert and Tomlin know they got to fucking pay you. All right, you deserve <laughs> it. And uh, we appreciate you so much, man. Keep crushing it out there. Have a great week. Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Ladies and gentlemen, Minka Fitzpatrick. Yeah!
He's an absolute stud. Yeah, Ball so hawk. good. I, I knew of him in Alabama, obviously. Then he went down to Miami, and no offense, Gump. All right, at that point, I wasn't paying attention to Miami. I'm not sure anybody was, okay, other than the Dolphins faithful. Whenever they traded a first-round pick, though, for a guy, immediately after Roethlisberger gets hurt, I think the immediate reaction in Pittsburgh was like, why are we fucking d- – mail it in on the year. Yeah. yeah. Like, hey, just mail it in on the year. Let's go ahead and do this. And Tomlin and Colbert were like, no, 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 defense can actually just get us to the playoffs. And the sons of bitches almost did. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I mean, the de- it you makes- trade a first-round pick for a guy in Pittsburgh better be a damn good player. Hey, I- <laughs> 